Greetings everyone, and welcome to Haunted Indiana, Ghosts and Strange Phenomena of the Hoosier State, written by James A. Willis. This is episode 3, The Great Circus Train Disaster. In the early part of the 20th century, the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus of Peru, Indiana, was one of the most popular in the United States, second only to Ringling Brothers. By crating up equipment, performers, and animals into boxcars, the circus was able to use the railroad to travel the country, bringing happiness and joy wherever it went. Sadly, those very rails caused the worst circus train wreck in U.S. history. In the early morning hours of June 22, 1918, hey, today's the 20th on the time of this recording. A train with everything needed to move the entire circus, including 14 flat cars, 7 stock cars to house the animals, and 4 sleeper cars, was barreling across Indiana toward the town of Hammond, where the circus was scheduled to give a performance. In the coming days, as the train passed through the town of Ivanhoe, conductor R.W. Johnson thought he smelled smoke. Believing the train was overheating, he ordered the engineer to stop. Once the train had come to a complete halt at a crossing known as Ivanhoe Interlocking, per standard operating procedures, Johnson dispatched a flagman to the rear of the train to keep an eye on things, while he checked for the source of the smoke. As Johnson inspected the train, he was unaware that miles down the track, Disaster was heading his way in the form of engine number 8485, operated by engineer Alonzo K. Sargent. This empty Michigan Central Railroad troop train had left Kalamazoo, Michigan, and was now pulling 20 empty Pullman cars to Chicago. To make matters worse, Sergeant would later testify that he had taken several kidney pills earlier in the evening that made him drowsy. In truth, Sergeant was falling asleep at the controls as the train rolled on at speeds upwards to 35 miles per hour. Sergeant claimed he never saw any warning signs or even a flagman, and he didn't know anything was wrong until almost the moment of impact. The flagman who had been stationed at the back of the circus train stated that he tried in vain to get the oncoming engine to slow down. At a few minutes past 4 a.m., the flagman watched helplessly as the troop train slammed into the back of the circus train upon impact. Several of the circus cars burst into flame. The flames immediately began to spread through the cars no doubt fueled by the many kerosene lanterns inside the train. Of course, the fact of that all of the cars were made of wood didn't help matters either. Before long, the entire circus train was fully engulfed, swallowing up both man and beast. Those who were able to escape the blaze tried valiantly to save those who were still trapped inside. But since they were still more than five miles away from the nearest town, Hammond. There was little they could do but watch the train burn and try to cover their ears to block out the horrible cries of humans and animals being burned alive. When the flames were finally extinguished around 8 a.m., the overwhelming task of trying to identify the dead and help the injured began. One look at the scene was all the officials needed to know that they had their work cut out for them. Many of the bodies were burned beyond recognition, and in some cases, a single limb was all that remained of an individual. Still, others completely burned away, essentially vanishing from the crash scene. Of the estimated 300 passengers on the train at the time of the collision, 86 were killed and more than 120 others were injured. That does not include the animals, many of which also perished. 
Five days after the crash, the remains of 56 and 61 individuals were taken to Chauvin's Rest, a 75 or 7, 750-acre section of Woodlawn Cemetery in Forest Park, Illinois, and laid to rest. Guarded by five elephant statues, the grave markers there are a stark reminder of the horrible accident. Many of the stones simply read unknown male or unknown female. So it is any wonder that such a tragic disaster would somehow leave behind a psychic imprint. That's what they say happened as a result of the Hagenbeck Wallace Circus train wreck. Although it happened almost 100 years ago, people visiting the site of the crash say they are overcome with a sense of sadness, while others report hearing sounds of crying and sobbing. And those night owls who have staged an early morning vigil on the anniversary of the accident claim to have entered some sort of weird time warp where the accident plays out in front of them, complete with disembodied screams, the smell of smoke, and even cries of the panicked animals. I hope you've enjoyed this story today. I will read more about that one, because I've... I think I've vaguely heard of this one. But, uh, I will look more into that. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you're new to my channel, or you've been subscribed for a while and you need to catch up, please head on over to my channel, check my stuff out, or check my videos and playlists subscribe if you haven't because all my subscribers are awesome and most importantly thank you for watching you rock